So for the energy production, you have to have glucose in your system. So glucose is made up of, I just use a simple chemistry here, uh, six carbon sugar. Okay. And they may also um, present as a, as a all dose, meaning aldehyde is present in glucose. Aldehyde molecule is present as a functional group, as a functional group. Functional group. I want to recollect your chemistry a little bit. So the sugar molecule, which will have a, a, an aldehyde molecule attached to this, in this one of the six carbon units, that is called glucose. Okay. The other six carbon sugar, for example, I'll give it to you fructose. The sugar which is present in fruits, mainly on fructose, this is also a six carbon sugar. Also a six carbon sugar but it has ketone as a functional group, keto group or ketone, so ketone molecule as a functional group. Okay, now this is called a keto sugar, keto sugar. So now you should know about what is all those or all those sugar, all those and this is a keto sugar, otherwise they call it as a ketos. So, please remember that we are talking about the glucose, then you may ask why I am talking about the fructose, because in the catabolism of glucose, some of the intermediate, it is going to be changed into the fructose molecule, and uh, sometimes the fructose molecules also change into the glucose molecule, so you will be able to follow through the pathway easily, okay? And also the aldehyde and the ketone group. What is an aldehyde group? I want to recollect. Suppose if you are having a carbon skeleton like an open chain, then here, here the carbon 4, 5, and then 6 carbon unit. Here you have a C, double bond O, and then CH. So CHO we call it as aldehyde, and that's what present in the glucose. Aldehyde is CHO group. But in the ketone group, okay, C double bond O, right, and then here you have CH2OH, and then you have CHOH like a carbon, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay, and then here the CH2OH. So if you see on the functional group, if you number the carbon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbon, so 6 carbon unit. Here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 carbon units, okay, this is the fructose. Could you see the functional group where it is present here in fructose? Carbon 2. But here, in the glucose, the functional group is present carbon 1, that is on the CH aldehyde. See, the carbon is having normally 4 valency here. So two valency, two is satisfied for O and one valency for hydrogen, another one valency for next carbon. So it is uh, really a four unit. Here, C, double bond O, and then here another carbon, this is another carbon. So the carbon valency is satisfied in all these this molecules. So you have to remember that is the one, carbon one, which is, uh, it is the uh, aldehyde group, but here the carbon, second carbon will have a functional group as a keto group. So, if you understand this, and then I'm going to uh, go into the next step on, I mean, how this glucose is being metabolized, okay? In the first step, when as soon as the glucose enter into the uh, system, or into, if you, if suppose it is a cell and nucleus, okay, and the glucose molecule is sitting here, and it should be transported across to the cytosol. And there are some molecules which are present on the membrane. They are called as a glucose transporters. Okay. They are glucose transporters. Glute, they call it glute. And there are different types of glucose transporters. Transporters, glucose transporters. 
they have a glucose ion transporter 1 or 2 or 3 or 4. So, they are present in a, in a membrane. Where, which membrane? In an outside membrane. And it will, it will permeate the glucose from outside into the inside and then inside you have a cytosol and then you have mitochondria and uh, all these enzymes are present inside. And say the cytosol, you have uh, several enzymes. So, as soon as the glucose enter and there is an enzyme called, the first step in glycolysis is your hexokinase. Hexose means, hexo means six, right? Hexokinase. So, this is the enzyme which will act on glucose and convert it to, and it will, it will take an ATP molecule and to convert it to ADP and PI, that is PI is the inorganic phosphate. So, the energy is required when you add a phosphate molecule to this glucose and the glucose will become glucose 6-phosphate. So, as I mentioned earlier, C, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6 carbon unit. And then one of these here, the uh, O, and then this is a functional group, and then the 6th carbon, so that's what is 6, and then U, U, uh, C, H, and then O, H, and then O. And instead of this hydrogen, you get phosphate group will be added to it. So, when this phosphate, initially it was there in a hydrogen and the hydrogen is removed and the phosphate molecule is added to it, for that you have to input some energy, ATP. ATP is required for this process. And then one phosphate is going, there are three phosphate molecules here, A, uh, you have P, P, P like that. And then one phosphate is going over to attach to glucose molecule and then the rest of them is a two molecule that is called two phosphate molecule that is we call it as a adenosine diphosphate ADP okay and the energy you know which is uh, which has been added to it and that energy is when a glucose 6 phosphate and as soon as the phosphate is added to it this molecule is more of energized energized you know, phosphate is added, the molecule is getting energized and then it will be a substrate for another enzyme. So, the substrate for the hexokinase is glucose, but the product will be a substrate for the another enzyme. So, that's what the chain reaction is going on. You follow now? Or no? Victoria, are you following now? Not yet? Yes? I could hear you. Yes. Okay. Cinco? Uh, Brittany or Mary? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. So, now I'm going to discuss about the hexokinase, this hexokinase or hexokinase, hexos means six, so the six sugar kinase, the hexokinase, here the glucokinase here, they are the large conformational change. As soon as the glucose is binding together, the large structural change, structural changes occurring into the molecule. The exokinase is a protein molecule, right? It's a protein molecule. Suppose this is a protein molecule. As soon as the glucose is binding together and there is a changes in the architecture or the structure of this molecule, it may change into like this. So, here it is a, a glucose molecule. So, it might change the conformational changes which can occur. So, that's on binding with the glucose. And there are two lobes over here. Here the one, and suppose you the uh, one lobe of uh, hexokinase, the another subunit of this uh, hexokinase is there. So it may change in together, they may come closer towards each other as soon as the one glucose molecule binds together. So that means there is some cleft which is formed, like, like this uh, cleft. So where the glucose molecule is binding together, and it will be easy when, when the clock binding and changes will occur and that will, that will uh, uh, you know, add 
or that will prevent the other water molecules are binding to it. I mean, when the glucose, they have a OH group, right? Hydroxyl group and carbon group and functional group, CHO, that aldehyde group, everything is there, right? And then CH2OH group like that. So you may wonder if the phosphate group which I'm adding to it, it should be specific for the sixth carbon of the glucose molecule. And you may wonder why this carbon is specifically chosen in compared to the other carbon unit. The, the hexokinase, it will fold in a fashion that suppose this is the molecule of the enzyme or hexokinase, okay, the beautiful combination which will cover it all together into the substrate. This is your substrate binding site or active site of the enzyme. Suppose if this glucose is attached to this region, the other molecules of hydroxy group and everything is attached are to be covered and only the sixth carbon is exposed outside. So what happened is this is being freely available so the phosphate molecule can go and bind together and the phosphate cannot go bind here or here or here and here. Though there are several hydroxyl group in the molecule, but it will attack only specific to sixth carbon unit and that is the beauty of the changes in the structural organization of exokinase. So that you should understand how exactly the sixth carbon is selected by the reorganization of the enzyme folding. Okay. So the ATP which is being added here which will attack here and then the product is as you know very well the product is glucose 6-phosphate. Now, as I mentioned, this is the product of the hexokinase and it is going to be a substrate for another enzyme. Substrate for another enzyme. What enzyme is that one here? Glucose 6-phosphate. It is going to be the next one is the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. That is another one. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase enzyme. G6PD in other way. G6PD. In, in a biomedical sense, the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiencies, that's a disease, is there, the deficiency as well. So you have to study on that separately, but you have to mention, you have to remember that glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase in this one, okay? And now, this, uh, the, the part is why you get the hexokinase reaction here, which I mentioned earlier, glucose, it gives an environment for the non-polar group to the polar group. Polar group is what water-loving group, that OH group. And also it might get rid of the sixth carbon outside so that it can go and bind to get. So hydrophilic group or hydrophobic group. So the more of hydrophilic of this particular sixth carbon should be exposed outside and thereby there is any other reaction or any water molecule uh, will add to it, you know, that will be prevented. So that's very important of the hexokinase. And the, the product of this one, the dehydrogenase in the reaction, what you get is the um, one more reaction. Glucose 6-phosphate can also be uh, added to the isomerase reaction, okay. That is called uh, glucose 6-phosphate is one side, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase in, in one other reaction. The another reaction, the glucose 6-phosphate is also involved into an isomerase reaction. Isomerase. I want to recollect what is an isomer. What is an isomer? Isomer. What is isomer? Do you know what is isomer in, uh, in chemistry? You have a same molecular weight, but 
you have different structure. Do you remember that? So that is called an isomer. So if you say glucose and fructose, same molecular weight, but structure is different. As I mentioned earlier, glucose is an aldose sugar, fructose is a keto sugar. So functional group are different from glucose and fructose. So glucose and fructose are an example for an isomer. So you should remember, whenever I think for the MCAT and other exam, competitive exam, they'll ask, this is a common question, what is an isomer? So they will give you A, structurally identical. Structurally disidentical. Uh, structurally is different. Molecular weight is the same and molecular weight is different. Then they will also got another option. Molecular weight is same, structurally different. That is the correct one. Molecular weight is same and structurally the same as an isomer. That is the wrong answer. So it's the same concept, but you should little bit of a concentration, you can be able to distinguish the correct answer. So here the example is glucose and fructose are isomer. These are typical organic chemistry or the biochemistry if you have understood earlier classes. Okay. What happened here? Uh, glucose 6 phosphate is be converted into fructose. Okay. And also 1 6 diphosphate. So you have got two phosphate group being added over here. Okay. So meaning here the glucose as I mentioned and here the fructose and you know the structural difference. One is the aldose sugar and the keto sugar and here the one phosphate group and the another phosphate group is also added. So that means you also have to have another ATP molecule is being spent. So from glucose how many ATP is spent so far? Glucose 6 phosphate glucose to glucose 6 phosphate one ATP is added or the energy molecule one P so that's why it is the one P. And now this glucose 6 phosphate to fructose 1 6 diphosphate or bisphosphate or biphosphate, we added this. Both are same 1 6 diphosphate or 1 6 biphosphate or 1 6 bisphosphate, all will be the same name, okay? Don't worry about that. But you have a 2 phosphate, diphosphate group. That means you have to add another ATP molecule. And the, the enzyme, what we are calling here, is the phosphoglucoisomerase. Phosphoglucoisomerase. This enzyme. Phosphoglucose. Phosphoglucose. And then the, it, it converts the glucose into a fructose. What is called fructose is an isomer. So phosphoglucoisomerase is an enzyme. ASE always, as you know, in biochemistry and enzyme, right? Phosphoglucoisomerase. And this phosphoglucose isomerase will do uh, a different job now. What job is that one? It will convert what is called aldo or aldehyde molecule, aldehyde, into a keto group. Keto group. As I mentioned in my first uh, 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 slide, which I earlier I have given you a picture. First carbon is aldehyde in glucose. And fructose, you have second carbon. So what will happen here, the glucose with the aldehyde that is being converted to a fructose molecule and fructose again the 1 and 6 diphosphate. So one first, this is also being phosphate added after the phosphoglucoisomerase and this is also phosphate is being added. So this phosphate is coming from glucose 6 phosphate but the first one, first carbon, which is the added with the phosphate molecule by the enzyme called phosphoglucoisomerase enzyme. So this one will, will have a three step. First of all, the glucose molecules are present in a, in, a, in a ring form. If you see the actual structure of the glucose in a six membered ring like this, okay, if this is the first carbon, CHO, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbon unit, if you call it like that. And then here, 6 carbon, you have the uh, phosphate molecule. Then you, and, and the fructose molecule, you, you looks like this. 
okay. This is the second carbon where you have a functional unit on that part. You know, first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon, sixth carbon. So here if you have a CH2 O PO4. So if you if you have a first one, PO4, one and then six, but this one is a fructose molecule and this is a glucose molecule. What happened here? The interesting point is the glucose ring should be open. So number one, the cyclic cyclic form of glucose to be open. Then only it can convert to this form. So that is the number one. Number two, change of group. What change of group? Change of group. Change of group is the aldehyde, aldehyde to keto group. Okay. See, this aldehyde group, that should be converted to the second carbon, keto. So, there is a change on the second carbon. So, glucose to fructose, how the glucose is converted or changed to fructose, the enzyme called phosphoglucoisomerase reaction. So, change of group, aldehyde to keto. And third one is the, again, once they've been done, then again close the form or they close the straight line. They close the loop back into this. So when you open, it's carbon, 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 carbon. It is easy. So when when you have a six-membered ring, so this carbon, this carbon, this carbon will be, will be this ring will be open, so you have a straight line, and the enzyme will react from this one to here, change this position, and also add to phosphate group. And what happens? Again, it will fuse together and to form a fructose molecule. So, all these three function done by the phosphoglucoisomerase reaction. So, you may wonder why we are spending much time on the inter intermediary metabolism on this particular topic is, the reason is, whenever the molecule is converted to the other, our aim is to derive some energy from that. So, you cannot derive energy from glucose 6-phosphate alone, no, it is no, it is not possible. So you have to convert into the one form to the another form, the another form to the another, next, then only you will get an energy. Because as I mentioned earlier in the last class, uh, the molecules are kept in a, in, a, in a system as a molecule. At any long time, glucose will be there as a glucose in millions and millions of years. Unless otherwise something happened to the molecule with an enzyme or any other reaction, then only it will be converted into the another molecule. So you need something else, and that something else, which call it the enzyme, and the enzyme, where the enzyme is coming from, again, enzymes are protein, and that protein is being coded by the gene, where the gene is coming from, it is coming from DNA, and DNA is from chromosome, where the chromosome is the nucleus, and the nucleus present in a cell, and the cell should be in a live form, or not the dead form. So you have a life, so you have a life science, that's what it's all about. So, without any other activity, glucose molecules cannot be transferred into the another one. So, you have to remember each and every change of reaction, the enzymes are involved and back of the enzyme, you should imagine that each enzyme is coded by a gene, a particular DNA sequence and that is being controlled by several factors, mutation or uh, any other environmental influences or activation of the gene products and everything. So I'm not going into that detail, that is a purely of molecular biology, but I am concerning about what different steps which is involved in the reaction now, okay? So the next step is the, the second phosphorylation. So the phosphoglucoisomerase, right? The first one, what I did, The isomerase, which I talked about, isomerase enzyme, that will convert to what is called the aldose or glucose into fructose. Fructose, that is ketose. This is the isomerase reaction. That's been done. So what is the next part is? Second phosphorylation. Second phosphorylation. See, that is second phosphate molecule should be added or another ATP molecule will be added. For this, there is a specific enzyme. See, the first enzyme which I mentioned earlier, phosphoglucoisomerase, which will convert into glucose 6-phosphate and that is going to the fructose 
uh, fructose 6 phosphate, for example, just one, one, one reaction, phosphoglucose isomerase. But the another ATP molecule is being added to it. For this, we have another enzyme, we call it phosphofructokinase. So that's what I'm going to talk about now. So the second phosphorylation to the fructose 6 phosphate to convert to with ATP fructose 1, 6, bisphosphate. Phosphate or diphosphate. Okay. So this is called, we call it as a phosphofructokinase. Phosphofructokinase. This is very important. PFK, otherwise. Not JFK, you can call it as a PFK, phosphofructokinase enzyme. Okay. So this will convert this to the final product as a fructose 1, 6 diphosphate group. Now we have a glucose, glucose 6 phosphate, fructose 6 phosphate, fructose 1, 6 diphosphate, and now we are going to get involved. As I just give you one, two, three, four, five, six carbon. And here you have a phosphate group. Here the double O fructose, right? And then here also you have a phosphate group. So this is a, a keto sugar because the C double bond O is a keto group. So you should remember when I say keto means you should remember C double bond O. Okay, C double bond oxygen, that's the thing. So this is a keto sugar or, or the fructose. This is called fructose one, six, diphosphate group. So how many carbon? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbon. And they have a 2 phosphate molecule. Now this carbon will be divided into 2. 1, 2, 3. This molecule is going to be cleaved into 2, 3 carbon units. 3 carbon compound. 2 of them. Because 2 times 3 is equal to 6, right? So this is the one compound. And this is another compound. And then each one will go into the next steps. We call it as a two, three carbon fragments. You may ask, hey, why don't we do glucose one six diphosphate into the two different group? In the natural system, it is not happening. Don't ask that question. It is there because there is no enzyme like a Phosphofructokinase, PFK, this node of phosphoglucokinase is there, but there is no reaction like this. But this is the one the predominantly the glycolysis which is taking place. So you have a fructose 1,6 diphosphate is going to be cleaved into two, three carbon fragments and number A, that's one compound, one from here, which is coming out as a glyceraldehyde, three carbon glyceraldehyde. And B is the dihydroxyacetone phosphate. D, glyceraldehyde, 3 phosphate. Glyceraldehyde, 3 phosphate. Another one is the dihydroxyacetone. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So, if you know here, dihydroxyacetone, probably this is a C ketone group, acetone group. C double bond O, if this is going to be converted into the uh, dihydroxyacetone, CH2OH like this. So, one OH and then here the CH2. So, what happened, this is a dihydroxy, this is another hydroxy, the another hydroxy, dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and the, this one will become a CHO, double bond O, and then H aldehyde. So it's a glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. 1, 2, 3 phosphate. So this is the one compound glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. And this is for the A. And this is for the B dihydroxyacetone phosphate. From where, what is the parent compound? Parent compound is 6 carbon unit fructose 1, 6 diphosphate. So the diphosphate, there are 2 phosphate group in the fructose, is cleaved into 2 molecule of 3 carbon of dihydroxyacetone, one phosphate group in phos dihydroxyacetone and the another phosphate is going to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So now you get from one molecule, now we have a two different molecule. Okay. So that's the step which you should 
understand now. Now, this part up to the division, division of uh, two, three carbon fragments, fragments, up to this, we complete the stage one of glycolysis. Stage one is over. The once you have a division of two, three carbon fragments, that is the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, glyceraldehyde phosphate, that part up to this, a stage one of uh, glycolysis is over. Then after this, each of them, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde, glyceraldehyde, GA, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So P is phosphate. A for acetone, H for hydroxy, di, dihydroxy means 2 hydroxy in chemistry 2 hydroxy. So DHAP, glyceraldehyde G, aldehyde A, and then phosphate, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate gap. So what happened? This dihydroxy acetone phosphate can be converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, and this is a reversible reaction too. Okay? And this is called, again, is an another isomer. As I mentioned before, phosphoglucose isomerase from the glucose to fructose, there's an isomerase. The same way here, what you will get here is the glyceraldehyde to uh, acetone. So this is, again, another isomerase reaction. Now that is, we call it as a thiol phosphate isomerase. Thiol phosphate isomerase reaction. Thiol phosphate isomerase reaction will convert this to this. Okay, the the mechanism for this we have to get in the intra molecular molecular oxidation reduction. This is very important. One molecule inside the molecule. Certain atom is uh, oxidized, another molecule uh, is being, another atom is being reduced, like intramolecular, intramolecular oxidation and reduction reaction. Okay. And this has been facilitated by an intermediate called enediol, enediol, E-N-D-I-O-L, enediol intermediate. See, your entire class, the intermediate metabolism is nothing but understanding the mechanism of how one molecule is converted into the another molecule using the uh, 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 different kind of mechanisms. Okay? So please remember that when the dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde phosphate, they can interchangeable and one molecule can be converted into the another molecule. See, the same DHAP change same molecule. See, glyceraldehyde 3, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is one molecule. Okay, it is coming, is out of, it is gone. It, it is come out of the cell. Fine. But what happened to the DHAP? The DHAP itself can rearrange by inside the oxidation and reduction. Inside the molecule, no enzyme is involved for that intramolecular. But it can be done in the thiol phosphate isomerase that can do this function of oxidation and reduction reaction and thereby it can convert into the another isomer form. So what you get ultimately, one glucose, one fructose and then you have a 2, 3 carbon unit of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. 2 glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate you can, you can take it from granted from that, not from, from one fructose you get a DHAP and DHAP again converted to another uh, GAP. So what you get, one GAP is gone, and the another GAP is coming from DHA, uh, DHAP, and now ultimately you have a two GAP, a two gap, which is there now. Now, the oxidation of aldehyde, now what you have now, I'm going to two molecules, two molecules of gap. You follow now? So here, the gap is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, 3 carbon in it. So 3 carbon times 
two, two molecules of three is equal to six. So the, the starting point is glucose. So you should always remember we started from glucose, just one molecule of glucose. So the gap is the two gaps are available. So this one, glyceraldehyde, right? Glyceraldehyde. This glyceraldehyde, if it is oxidized, what will happen? When you remember when you are organic chemistry, if you do uh, alcohol, alcohol oxidized to aldehyde, you remember that? And then aldehyde is oxidized to an acid. Remember that? You follow? When you do the little bit of organic chemistry, whenever the alcohol is oxidized, when you drink a lot of alcohol in yourself, in your thing, what the enzyme in there in the liver? Alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme. That enzyme will oxidize the alcohol, whatever you are drinking, that is converted into aldehyde, and then the aldehyde is going to be the ones getting into the brain and different tissues, and then you give you a big hike, you know, big hike, you know, onto your status of that, you know, it will will get all those forms. Not the alcohol itself, but the oxidized product. But in sometimes, if the uh, uh, you have to, you know, keep it for a while. Uh, whenever the champagne or anything, or, or wine or alcohol, alcohol, when you open it and after a while, if you drink it, it will become more of a, a sour taste, right, in an acid. Because the aldehyde is converted to auto-oxidation by the air, converted to acetic acid or the acid form. So the acid, this is a natural way. Whenever you open an alcohol bottle, you have to drink it immediately. All of them are a few days or something like that. Otherwise, everything will be, become bad and that will be toxic to you. But in the alcohol, in, the, in, a, in our own system, the alcohol is converted to acetaldehyde, aldehyde, and then aldehyde oxidized to acid. So glyceraldehyde will be converted to glycerate. Uh, glyceric acid, glycerate as a reaction. So, in the in a matter of fact, the glyceraldehyde for three phosphate plus NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NAD plus, okay, in the presence of inorganic phosphate, okay, now you are adding a phosphate molecule here, a highly transferable molecule, phosphate molecule, inorganic phosphate, NAD is being added because you are oxidizing. Okay, so what you get one three bis uh, I mean di bis phosphoglycerate. One three bis phosphoglycerate is be formed, meaning you already have glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Okay, so if you have a glycerol molecule, what is glycerol? C glycerol molecule is CH two OH CH two OH CH two OH. This is called glycerol. So already you have a one molecule of glycerol dehyde. Glycerol dehyde means again glycerol, and then glycerol dehyde means CHO, CHOH, CH2O, and then P. So this is a glycerol dehyde because aldehyde. And then if you have glycerate means this oxygen. This this is being oxidized. The first carbon is oxidized. CHO, CH2OH. That is the OH alcohol group, CHO is an uh, aldehyde group, and this is going to be converted into an acid group, and now you have CHOH, and then CH2OP. So this is the 3 phosphoglycerate, COO minus, I put here the COO minus. So this is the real oxidation done by the NAD, and the phosphate molecule is being added here. So you have a first carbon uh, phosphate, third carbon is phosphate, and this is called 1,3-bis phosphoglyceric acid, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate molecule. So I already mentioned how many molecules we started with, one molecule of glucose, but ended with the two molecules of GAP or glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, and now what happened when these two uh, molecules of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, how many molecules are there now? Again, I'm going to write it here, two molecules. Okay, two molecules of 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate. Uh, I just trot on that one, same one. Okay, otherwise 1,3-BPG, I put it right, phosphobis, bis-phosphoglycerate molecule, acid. 
And this reaction is being done, carried out by gap dehydrogenase or bisaldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Bisaldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase means it's an oxidation reaction. Always, whenever I'm going to write dehydrogenase from this day onwards, you should always remember it forms with an NADP, uh, sorry, NAD or NADP or FAD or some nicotinamide dinucleotide and then H plus which is always involved, dehydrogenase reaction, three more of hydrogen, okay, and then addition of oxygen on that, okay. The product always you get when whenever it has a reaction, NADH plus and H plus, meaning this dehydrogenase enzyme name itself will denote dehydrogenase means it removes the hydrogen from here and add it to NAD and the product will be NADH and H plus. And what is the another one? What is the product? The another the product is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate or glyceric acid is formed. So these are the product from this, okay? And this is a mixed anhydride, okay? Now, have you ever studied acetic anhydride? An ester, acetic anhydride means, you know, acid, acetic acid and an alcohol. Like an ester group will be linked together. So in your organic chemistry, if you remember, uh, like uh, I've just given an example, CH2OH is an ethanol, uh, CH is an, uh, CH3, okay. Ethanol, okay, this is the alcohol. Plus, I'm going to add uh, CH3, COOH. This is an acid, okay, COOH. I put it over there. So what happened here, if the, if uh, acetic acid and this one may, uh, acid and alcohol, this is an acid. Acid and alcohol make uh, either an ester or it can also, they can also form as a, uh, what I call it as an anhydride. An anhydride can be formed, or an ester linkage of the ester linkage. So in this case, in the in the uh, glyceraldehyde three phosphate one three bisphosphoglycerate is a yeah, mixed anhydride anhydride of what anhydride of phosphoric acid. I gave an example for acetic acid, but here the phosphoric acid, phosphoric acid. Why? Because you have a phosphate group is there in that molecule. So this phosphoric acid and a yeah, carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid means you have a COO group, right? COO group and then yeah, a phosphoric acid group is HPO4. So here also H, CO, see the carboxylic acid, COOH. Uh, one group and then phosphate group and they are attached to the three carbon units over there. So that's why it is a mixed anhydride of two acids together. And also what is called CH2OH group is also there, right? One carbon, this is one carbon, this is another carbon of phosphate and this is an acid. So you get a mixture of uh, uh, phosphoric acid and a carboxylic acid and it is an anhydride. Also an alcohol group is also there, so it is an anhydride. And this compound is highly energy potential, this molecule, highly, highly energy transfer potential, energy transfer potential, transfer potential, meaning you can transfer the energy. Imagine you have a not one phosphate, you have two phosphates, also you have anhydride of phosphoric acid and carboxylic acid. They are a bit dangerous, like a time bomb, you know, whenever the two mixture of uh, exergonic process, you know, you have more of energy is being released. The, the same way, when you have the acid, anhydride, phosphoric acid, and everything mixed it together, and this is a highly, highly energy transfer potential, and this molecule is highly, uh, you know, unstable in a sense, the one of its, one of its phosphate group, PO, phosphoric acid group, can be transferred transferred to ADP and what will happen the result ATP formation 
ATP is formed. So that's what I want to come into that point. So in the first couple of reaction, we put more ATP. There is no income, like a business. You invest something, you have to get something out of it. But we haven't received yet. But this is the first income we are getting of the investment of the two ATP, the first two reaction. Now the ATP is formed where? From 1, 3, bis phosphate glyceride. Why? Because this compound is highly unstable and they have an energy potential. It can donate, it can, it can put more of the phosphate group to ADP molecule, the adenine dinucleotide phosphate group, and then the PI is being added to it. Now, what you get, you get an ATP is formed here. Now, the phosphate group transfer, so ADP converted to ATP. So, this free energy, this being transferred, and this is called the free energy. This is the advantage of whatever we are eating. Why we eat? More energy. How the energy is coming from? Free energy is coming from food. These are the metabolism, and these are the enzyme which is involved in our system. If you don't eat, no problem. You don't get energy. That's it. Right? So, you, uh, the mechanism which is involved on this one is the phosphorylation. Now, we are going to study about how this phosphate is transferred to ADP. So that is the next part. I will give you 10 minutes break, come back and we will study how the ATP is really, really formed Dr. in the system. Dr. Stoma? Yes, go ahead. I just want to let you know that um, since you are going to change the syllabus, October 8th is Columbus Day and school will be closed also and you have it on the syllabus for us to have class. Which one? The October 8th. Oh, Columbus uh, okay. Uh, th there is no class in that one? No. School oh, okay. Closed on Columbus Day. Oh, there's no class, but yeah, in the syllabus I put the class, right? I'm sorry, what? In the class I put, uh, in the syllabus I put a class there in October 8th? Y yes. Oh, okay, okay. So there's no class, right, according to the new timetable? Yes. Okay, okay, I will change it. Thank you. Are you back now, everyone? Yeah, everyone there will finish it up. Um, The ATP formation, okay, this is our main goal, how the energy or the free energy is available. Whatever we are getting free, then the people are interested. Not the people, actually the body cells are interested, you know, that's why the free energy is coming up. So this energy is being used for ATP production number one and also heat and also for the transport process transport of molecule across the membrane or osmotic gradient, you know. So, our other function of the cell, other function, like, uh, you know, it also involved in the muscular contractions and other things as well. But we, we will see that one by one. I mean, how the next step after the, uh, you know, glycerol decay, 3 phosphate, 1, 3, 4, uh, bisphosphoglycerate to ADP. Now, what is the next step in that one? The phosphorylation, the mechanism for that reaction, mechanism of the reaction, phosphorylation means phosphorylation. So, you should remember that certain word, phosphorylation. That means the addition of phosphate group. Okay, phosphorylation. You are adding the phosphate molecule to glucose or to fructose or to glyceraldehyde phosphate. Now here, this is coupled. This reaction, phosphorylation reaction, is coupled with okay oxidation of glyceraldehyde. Oxidation of glyceraldehyde. Glyceraldehyde, glyceraldehyde, three phosphate. So phosphorylation means addition of phosphate, addition of phosphate molecule. That's what the meaning of phosphorylation. And this is combined with oxidation of glyceraldehyde. When you oxidize the glyceraldehyde three phosphate, you get glycerate, right? 
glycerate 3 phosphate when you do oxidize. But if you add addition of phosphate again, another one is also being added. So this glycerate we call it as a phosphoglycerate where the phosphate molecule is being attached, first carbon it is being attached. So the product will be 1,3-phosphoglycerate. Okay, that's what is the 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate. That's what the molecule is being formed. So, as I mentioned earlier, these 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate 1,3-phosphoglycerate, bisphosphoglycerate, the two molecule phosphate, they have the potential of phosphate transfer. Phosphate transfer from where? To whom? Transfer from this phosphate group to the ADP molecule, adenosine diphosphate. So this is a lower energy. So as soon as it donates this VI or the uh, uh, phosphate transfer from the phosphoglycerate molecule, you get the product is ATP is formed. Okay. So the outcome of this reaction, what is the outcome of the phosphoglycerate as an energy transfer potential? The outcome of this grand reaction is to one, the glyceraldehyde phosphate is oxidized, is oxidized to carboxylic acid carboxylic acid. Number two, NAD plus is reduced to NADH and H plus. Three, ATP is formed. ATP is formed from where? PI coming from form 3 phospho group plus ADP. So, and ATP is formed at the expense of carbon oxidation. That is the, at the expense, expense of carbon oxidation. So, you need to produce ATP by oxidation of the carbon and here the gap is oxidized carboxylic acid. NAD plus is reduced to NADH and H plus and this part of NADH will be, uh, you know, will be reused in some of the dehydrogenase reaction glycolysis uh, that we will see in a quite a bit. But the ATP, whatever we spend, the ATP, two ATP, one ATP is already formed here. I'll tell you, if I say one ATP means it's coming from one G, one gap or one glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, right? But ultimately, what I did earlier, two GAP is formed because uh, these are because of the uh, six carbon. This is the three carbon, right? So two GAP means what you get ultimately two molecules of ATP is formed. You follow now? So initially we start with uh, uh, okay. Initially we start with uh, initially we start with uh, uh, one glucose or six carbon unit and that is being divided into two. So now two, three carbon unit. So each three carbon unit will produce one ATP. So what you get, one glucose will produce two ATP. You follow now? On that? Okay. Yes. Yes, that's right. To, yeah, that's correct. But we are going to still, we are going to produce more ATP the next time. That's why I want to go to now. Okay. Now, the additional ATP, another, another two molecule of ATP will be produced. Additional ATP is formed, is formed from pyruvate molecule. How? We will see that one. That is from the... Uh, uh, glyceraldehyde, phosphate to 2 ATP is formed. We have additional from the 1,3-phosphoglyceric uh, acid that is going to convert it to the pyruvate molecule. So the pyruvate will, uh, will give you another two molecules of ATP. So each uh, 
pyruvate, the formation of the pyruvate, okay, will produce one molecule of ATP. For that is true, yeah, phosphoenol pyruvate. Phosphoenol, E-N-O-L, E-N-O-L pyruvate molecule. And that is going to be converted to another molecule of ADP and PI, and that will produce uh, another ATP molecule. So, two phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate, you get one molecule of ATPs produced. So, we have two molecules, you have two ATPs formed. So, totally how many ATPs formed? Two ATP here, and the previous uh, one, three, these are all together, three phosphate, two, two plus two, four ATP is formed from one glucose oxidation till pyruvate, and two molecules of ATP is used in the first stage. So, net will be two is formed plus and minus two ATP. So, net will be you are gaining two ATP at the end of the reaction. You follow now? Yeah? Six carbon unit is oxidized into two pyruvate. What you gain is the two ATP molecule in this. Because for two ATP is used and uh, four ATP is formed. So uh, the ultimately, if you if you minus the two ATP, you get rest of them two ATP. You are gaining on this part. Now, um, the regeneration of the metabolism of regenerator, the ATP uh, is regenerated and the NAD is regenerated uh, because of the earlier step, the dehydrogenase reaction, and those will be used, reused, or uh, recycled, recycled. Okay, now the pyruvate will be converted to, there are three steps for the pyruvate molecule. Pyruvate molecule will be converted to either, it can go as ethanol, you know, for the ethanol or biogas and other, uh, you know, for the commodities, you can use it from the plant and, and then you can use the ethanol gas. That's what we are using in our gas. Uh, if it's in the muscle, in the anaerobic reaction, and this has also been, ethanol can also be produced by yeast. For the oxidation, that's what the alcohol is being produced and biogas and, and liquor and everything, you know, that this is the conversion step by yeast and other microbes microbes. Or pyruvate can also be converted to lactic acid or lactate molecule and this lactic acid is, uh, is mainly of anaerobic and means without oxygen, anaerobic condition. No oxygen is available then more so that the lactic acid is formed. This is the one of the reaction when uh, you work hard or do more exercise your muscle become pain because you are not taking enough of oxygen to convert the pyruvate into, into acetyl coa. The another one is molecule, what you get, acetyl, acetyl coenzyme A. If you more oxygen is more, you are converted to acetyl coa and that will give you acetyl coenzyme A converted to more energy. If less oxygen, what happens is oxygen is less or you get lactic form, lactate formation. Or if you have enough enzyme or yeast, the pyruvate converted to alcohol or microbes. So, in your system, mainly it will convert it to acetyl coenzyme A to produce more energy with, uh, with more oxygen. But your oxygen concentration is less. If you are not taking more of oxygen, you, what will happen? The lactate will be formed. And that's what the, you, if you get the muscle pain of more of oxidation, less of oxygen, your muscle is uh, full of lactic acid. That gives a irritation to your nerve endings. That gives a pain. So you never do the hard exercise or walking thoroughly without taking enough oxygen. Uh, you know, more and more of lactic acid is formation. So that's what lactate in muscular uh, function. You know, more of lactate or muscle. Without oxygen, the muscle become more of lactate production. The acetyl coenzyme can enter into tricarboxylic acid cycle or TCA cycle, which I am going to talk you uh, talk with you probably the next class about it. TCA cycle, okay, and the TCA cycle, and and then you got electron transport chain in the mitochondria where you get the energy or energetics level. So our problem is I am stopping it over here up to the five way concentrations, okay. So that's what our the glycolysis is going to be all about.
Now, the, the next one is the uh, how NAD plus is the binding to the binding and then how the H plus is being produced. Okay, NADH. I mean, here, uh, the, the next step, what I want you to remember, fructose, not only on glucose, fructose can be converted into glucose and glucose into glycolysis pathway, glycolysis pathway. The same thing is galactose. Galactose is also a six carbon sugar and it is a milk sugar. In other words, lactose is a disaccharide. Lactose is a disaccharide. Disaccharide means two monosaccharides. That is disaccharides. That's under two monosaccharides. S A C C H saccharide, two monosaccharides. That is, one is the glucose plus galactose. Glucose and galactose form lactose. That is on the milk sugar. Lactose is a milk sugar. It's a dicarbo disaccharide. There's a two mono sugar combined together. It's a lactose. Now I'll ask another question. Sucralose or sucrose. Sucrose is glucose plus fructose. So whenever the cane sugar are sweet, that's coming from whatever you are getting on, on the coffee or everything, that's on glucose and fructose. Another compound is the sucralose, that is on the splenda. And uh, this one is nothing but the sucrose molecule, okay, on the, that's the glucose and fructose, but uh, it is, uh, that's one of the, uh, suppose this is the, your, your glucose and then you have a, a fructose molecules, okay? And they are joined together and all the hydrogen groups and everything. This is a disaccharide of a uh, sucrose molecule. But one of the hydrogen, instead of hydrogen, there's a chloride molecule is attached to it. So when you remove the, the glucose, uh, the one carbon at the third position, Chloride is being attached to it, then that is became a sucralose, and this will have a 200 times more sweet. That's why the Splenda is uh, cheaper and is an artificial uh, sweetener. And there is no bacteria, there is no enzyme will react to it. No. That's why it is no energy value. Suppose if you take sucrose, it will can be easily converted to as a disaccharidase enzyme into glucose and fructose and glucose and fructose can interchangeable and more of glucose will be formed and if this glucose is there then you are activating the glycolytic pathway. The same thing with the, uh, with the increase of glycolysis with the galactose. So galactose can also interconvertible galactose to glucose. So galactose to glucose also interconvertible so you can have more energy. If condition, if you have a lactase enzyme, mind it, lactase enzyme. So meaning this lactase or, or, or the uh, disaccharidase uh, enzyme will act on lactose, the disaccharide so it acts on lactose and the product will be glucose and galactose. And this glucose and galactose uh, are interconvertible or galactose can be converted into glucose, more glucose and you will have more energy if you have lactase enzyme. If you don't have the lactase enzyme, then what you get is the lactose intolerance, intolerance. So this is a condition where most of the people in Africa, in Asian countries, uh, some people they got the lactose intolerant, they cannot digest lactose. So the, the problem is the lactose won't digest it and the glucose, they will attract of uh, more of uh, water in the intestine and it gives a flatulence and it gives a diarrhea. So these people are suffering from lactose intolerance. And one more thing, if the galactose also, the galactose, if the galactose, there's a transferase enzyme, galactose to convert it to glucose molecule. 
So those some people they may have the lactase enzyme at the initial stage, they have it, but the galactose to glucose conversion is not there. There is a mutation in the enzyme called transferase enzyme. If you have this enzyme deficiency in old age, you may get this enzyme is less and less and less. So when you get less enzyme, galactose is not converted to glucose, what you get is more of, more of galactose, galactose in blood. So this condition we call it as galactosemia, galactosemia. So once you get the galactosemia or more of glucose, uh, uh, sorry, galactose, it can be converted to uh, by the enzyme because this, uh, this is an, uh, more of, uh, again, it is an aldose sugar. The HCHO group can also reduce to another OH group and the, by, uh, by, by the enzyme uh, of the, you know, the uh, re reduced, that the dehydrogenase enzyme again, the transferase as well as the dehydrogenase enzyme. So you get the product called galactitol, galactitol, like a sorbitol, galactitol. So all this carbon, 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 all of them you get the CHOH and CH2OH. And all of them, OH group, OH group, OH group, OH, just like a honey. You know, more of the sweet. This is a sweetener, more. So if this galactitol is all more, and if it is accumulated on your eye, that will lead to accumulation of in your eye lens. It's pretty on the lens. Uh, you know, it will, it will lead to cataract, cataract formation. So this, why I'm explaining this, because this is your biomedical sciences class, right? You have to have some, what the metabolism is, is mean to, as a medical point of view, as a clinical point of view. How the pathogenesis of cataract is formed. Mainly the cataract is formed in the old age, normally in old age. So people should avoid milk or milk sugar in old age. That's the period. If you take it, if you don't have enzyme, that's it. You are going to suffer in galacto, galactitol and as well as the cataract formation. And you have to remove by surgical means onto the lens and there are corrections and everything going on. Number two, you have to have a, a, a test for the galactitol transferase in your RBC. So periodically, the red blood cell, you have to uh, test for the, the amount or the concentration of the transferase enzyme. It is rich in the red blood cells in the blood. So you can also, it's a positive diagnosis. So if in any case, in a, if your doctor, they refer to, if you got any cataract, you check in this one. But in my point is when you get the old age, you know, you have to have a periodic check with the transferase. And then if you have a less of transferase, either you supplement that to prevent the cataract formation or you avoid milk products. That's it, period. No lactose. Now, the another one, the, the point is here, the um, um, lactase deficiency or lactose intolerance. That's what I was talking about. The another bacteria which is also involved is the lactobacillus. Bacillus is a raw track bacteria, lactose bacillus. And this bacillus is normally present in the urogenital tract, urogenital tract. And it, if it more, normally it is present, lactobacillus bacteria in urogenital tract. If it is present, it is a good, it's a good sign because it will convert most of the lactose and everything to lactate or the uh, pyruvate into the lactate formation. And this lactate will prevent, prevent other bacteria, prevent other bacteria, other bacterial uh, pathogen, I put it, pathogen. So if this bacteria lactobacillus is normally present in the urogenital tract, if it is present, it's good. If this number is going down, you get the pathogenic bacteria will be, will be more because it will give rise to less pH, pH 
or the urogenital tract, pH is less, meaning more of acidic environment. So, in the urogenital tract normally kept in acidic condition. If this lactobacillus number is going down, you get more of the pH, that means the acidic level is going down, uh, is more, it is, more is prevention, that is less pH, more acidic is, is good. So, if it is not acidic, it is toward a basic, then that will enhance the pathogen uh, or bacterial pathogen to grow more and that is uh, lethal or more of bacterial infection, uh, prone to bacterial infection. So, these are all some of the points that we have to remember uh, uh, about the pyruvate, pyruvate to lactate. This one is pyruvate to lactate. And the pyruvate to ethanol, this is by an uh, yeast and other organism and this is in a muscle as well as in the urogenital tract by another organism, this one again and uh, another one is the acetyl coenzyme, acetyl coenzyme and this can be done with the, from, from the following class as well, you know. And now, galactose which I mentioned earlier, that is toxic if it is present in the, you know, more mostly in, in, in the system or the blood, that's I just, I just change that part, galactose and then the adulthood consumption milk that should be avoided because of the cataract. Now I want to discuss uh, briefly on the regulation of glycolytic pathway. Glycolytic pathway regulation. So this regulation by ATP molecule. See, if you have a continuous supply of glucose, 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 more glucose, and you will get the more of pyruvate, and then more of lactate, or, uh, or in, uh, in other, uh, other uh, bacteria, you get uh, alcohol, or fermentation in alcohol, or you may go to acetyl -CoA. Sometimes, you know, you don't need, or you don't eat, or, you know, at the time, what will happen, the glucose to pyruvate, and this should be regulated. So, that means a feedback inhibition. Like, if you have more ATP is formed, and this will inhibit the, its own degradation pathway. And that's what is that ATP is will bind to phosphofructokinase. So this enzyme is critical. Phosphofructokinase is critical. So it is uh, it, it can accept ATP if more ATP is there and this enzyme is switched off, meaning the glycolysis will be switched off. Okay. So at the same time, if the ATP and AMP the ratio if this ratio is falling down, decrease in the pH or the... If. So what will happen if you have this, the AMP, ATP by AMP ratio, this ratio is lower, what will happen? You get, you know, you, you get more, it will be activating, okay? So it is, uh, it, it is the inversely proportional. So, if you have a more of anaerobic oxidation in some cases, if you have more of a oxidation which is occurring, so the PFK which you monitor and the ATP is there and the ATP inhibit this and thereby control the glycolytic pathway. Okay. So, we will see um, and some of those in, uh, in, in, in our PowerPoint in a short while I am just going through and then the regulation of glycolysis in the muscle which I mentioned earlier, that is on the lactic, lactic acid formation. Okay. And also, there are some uh, family of family of glucose transporters, glucose transporters. So these glucose transporters are present in these glucose transporters are present in the membrane, the biomembrane, as I mentioned, the nucleus. And some some of them are glucose one transporter and uh, GL uh, UT2, GL UT1. So that is the GLUT transport 1 and then another transporter, the transporter again is a protein 3, 4 and then you have a basal lateral uh, glucose transporters. So I have done some other work on the glucose transporters with the different diseases and conditions and it may vary in the pathogenesis of certain diseases. Okay? And most importantly, uh, the glycolysis is the one in the cancer is being promoted like a Suppose if you have the tumor or cancer cells and the cancer cells, uh, they are highly metabolized because they are 
uh, uncontrolled, uncontrolled cell division, right? Uncontrolled cell division. For this, it needs more ATP. So if you have more ATP means you have to activate more of glycolysis. So the more glycolysis and more ATP, more cell division, so that is the nature of this. So when you, when you label, radio label, okay, for a particular glucose, take glucose molecule, C, 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 some of this, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay. And then one, some other uh, hydrogen uh, or oxygen, uh, you know, one other group you can radio label. And then you find where the radio label is going out, you can easily identify the tumor. Because where highly, highly, you may also see the other areas, but this area is more specific and they can easily find out in a scanning. I'll go walk you through in some other PowerPoints here, okay. So that's one of the diagnosis they use for glycolysis is a cancer marker, cancer marker. Identification by your morphology, looking at the PET scan or a, or a CAT scan, you know, wherever the tumor is there, they can inject the probe with the radio label. It will go and accumulate and deoxyglucose, which is the radio label one. It will go and bind to the cancer tissue and they can easily scan in a non-invasive way. I mean, not non-invasive way, but there is no surgery or anything. You ask them to ingest the glucose into the body or inject through the IV and the glucose will be there in the cancer tissue and you can scan and you can easily find out. So that is the meaning the glycolysis has been used to identify the cancer in our body. So that is the bottom line. Okay. The another one, if we have pyruvate and other amino acids, other non-carbohydrate, non-carbohydrate molecules, other non-carbohydrate material or amino acids, and pyruvate, you can also synthesize glucose. So this is, it's not a reversal of glycolysis, but at the same time, the other uh, factors, other molecule can also synthesize, synthesize glucose. And this process we call it as gluconeogenesis. And this gluconeogenesis can occur in, mainly in liver. So you should understand this part. So what I discussed earlier, how glucose molecule is broken down to different molecules and gives some more ATP. And then there's a fermentation process and the muscular process and anaerobic and aerobic oxidation. And now the from pyruvate and with other molecule, other amino acid, other non-carbohydrate molecules, how they are assembled together or form in a different pathway getting to synthesis glucose we call it as the pathway we call gluconeogenesis and this gluconeogenesis is taking place in the liver cells, in the liver, okay. So, we will see that one and the, we are going to look into the PowerPoint as the, how the pathway is the liver and then muscle and blood and everything is integrated together and that is called as a, as a pathway integration pathway integration. Okay. So this we will see that and I am going to show you some PowerPoint and then explain again uh, in one of those uh, features now for you. Okay. And uh, let me open the PowerPoint now. Okay, now we can see the guy, uh, sportsman is running. So what will happen if there's less oxygen, but if he is running so fast? So you get, you think that he's going to lose of more of pyruvate into lactic acid because more oxygen, because he's not taking enough breathing getting into you in his uh, body. So ultimately his muscle is going to be suffered by the little bit of pain after that, you know. So that's one other thing, how the ATP molecule is being presented in a muscular contraction. Now you can see that how he's a muscular fiber, the ATP and cytoplasm muscular contraction and here the, the pyruvate is converted to carbon dioxide and water, no problem. This man can, this sportsman can do very well. But if he is not getting more of oxygen, it's converted to lactic acid that's going to be pain in his muscle. So that's why A is the low oxygen, B is the normal or going long run or slow run. 
So you have to have, uh, uh, that's what the slow pace you have to do whenever your marathon start. When you see the sports Olympic, you cannot start the fast and then you get a pain after that. But you have a slow pace, yes, you can maintain and then you can go into that. That's what it's all about. Glucose, C6H12O6, glycolysis, you have the pyruvate. This is the ultimate aim. We have to produce more of pyruvate. If you have pyruvate there, then the pyruvate is converted to ethanol in, in a plant and other resources and uh, some of the yeast or the microbes or it can be converted with oxygen, carbon dioxide and water. This is a complete oxidation process and there more energy is being released. Or if less oxygen can go into the lactate and that is a real pain and, and some of the microbes can also do this one. So this is another uh, way you can do it. I mean just the conversion of pathway. Let's see. See now the stage one which I mentioned before, DHAP to GAP, that is the first stage. And this is the second stage. If you have one GAP, NADH ATP, ATP is formed. So how many two ATP is formed? So because of DHP converted to GAP, so you have a two, so you have a two times two, four ATP. But how many ATP is used? As I mentioned to you, two ATP is being used. So, so how much we are gaining? Two ATP. Yes. Yeah. Because you may have some problems, you know, in your homework, you can, you can also mention that too. Now this is the exact reaction, how the, uh, you know, this is the structure of the glucose. Uh, the ATP and hexokinase reaction, see where the phosphate molecules are added, PO3, sixth position, correct? So glucose 6 phosphate and the ADP and HP, H plus. And this ADP is again to be used for the next step where the ATP is formed, right? So now you the use of ATP and the ADP is released at the cytosol. Now this is a, a big picture of the stage one. We'll see the stage one of what happened. Hexokinase, glucose 6 phosphate, glucose 6 phosphate, phosphoglucose isomeric, fructose 6 phosphate. And then phosphofructokinase, ATP to ADP, another molecule of ATP is adding together first position, fructose 1,6 diphosphate or bisphosphate, and this is aldolase reaction where it is being hydrolyzed. The six carbon units will be, become two, three carbon units like a dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glycerol DA3 phosphate. You have a triose phosphate isomerase reaction, and now you get uh, end of stage one. Now we will talk about glycerol DA3 phosphate convert to another PI. See, it is not ATP. You should understand this part. Always people get confused. I, if I ask you a question, how the glycerol DA3 phosphate converted to 1,3 bis phosphoglycerate, two molecule of phosphate, it is coming for inorganic phosphate plus NAD. It is not ATP involved here. Mind it. So inorganic phosphate is being added to glycerol DA3 phosphate. That means normal phosphate group, it will take it inorganic phosphate and energized, more energized, become 1,3 bisphosphate. And then the phosphoglycerate kinase, the ADP and the ATP is formed. So he, in this step, he is taking inorganic phosphate, converted to the ATP. And then 3 phosphoglycerate converted to 2 phosphoglycerate from enolase for hydrolysis, phosphoenol pyruvate and this phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate kinase enzyme you get ADP to ATP. So how many kinases involved here? Pyruvate kinase, phosphoglycerate kinase, and then the previous step uh, which I mentioned here, phosphofructokinase and hexokinase. If you remember, four kinases reaction, but two kinases use ATP, another two kinases will release of ATP because of the two molecule, you get four ATPs being formed. So you should follow through uh, this. This is glycolysis. This is over. This is all about I want to discuss today. Okay, and, the, and then another one is the reversal pathway. But the mechanism of reaction only, and also clinical significance, which I I I, I just I discussed earlier. So this is something like a revision. What I did in written onto my uh, in, in in my document camera. So if you have any questions on this part, see how the glucose molecule is getting in, in uh, you know, getting in touch uh, inside the hexokinase reaction. Do you see that one? Hexokinase, this is the glucose molecule. How this is glucose, once they're adding the glucose, uh, you know, initially it is on, on the blue, but in the, uh, you know, it, it's, it's folding. That's a cleft unit, how they are coming in contact uh, and together. Once it's been attached to it, then it can fold easily, this protein molecule, 3D. 
So glucose 6 phosphate, glucose 6 phosphate open chain form. This is the ring form and this ring is opened. Now we can see the colored one. So that's why I like this wire. You know, it's the colored explanation CO and CH2OH. And now the reaction is the fructose 6 phosphate open chain. Now fructose 6 phosphate is the closed chain. This is the actual form or more stable form, in other words. This is not a stable one and this is more of stable one in that form, okay? Phosphofructokinase or PFK, how? Fructose 6 phosphate here at 6th position. Now the first position also phosphate is added because of the ATP. So now this has become fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. Aldolase reaction, this is being two groups like a dihydroxyazetone phosphate, DHAP, resaldehyde 3 phosphate, GAP. Now, triose phosphate isomerase, now we can dihydroxyazetone phosphate, how they are interchangeable. Look at this one, CH2OH, CHO, okay. So, this is a C double bond O, is aceto group, acetone group, that's why it is our dihydroxy acetone. This is one hydroxy, this is another hydroxy, but instead of hydrogen, you get the phosphate group. So, it is really a dihydroxy, but the phosphate is there, that's what we are giving, phosphate group. So, the naming of the compound is dihydroxy acetone phosphate, converted to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Now, you can see that one here, the C double bond O is open to 1 CH and 1 OH. And this one is the C double bond O, that's why glyceraldehyde is ketone and aldehyde conversion by an isomerase reaction. How this has been looped? Yes. Uh, yeah. The, the formula for phosphate, uh, PO4? Yeah, PO4, you can do it, but here the PO3, 2 minus. Oh, 2 minus, yes. That's what it is, the PO3, 2 minus. So PO4, if you do another oxygen, add to it, that's more stable form. That's normally we do. Phosphate, we, we PO3 is, is the one phosphate, and 2 minus, and these are 2 minus. You can also call it the phosphate. Now, now this is again 3D structure. When when we studied on glycolysis, we don't have the three-dimensional how the enzyme is being folded and do together. But this is more of the extra crystallographic analysis reports coming out. People they are putting more of this ribbons and everything how the actual uh, protein and where exactly the reaction is taking place. Okay, this is right here. So this is another way to explain the dihydroxyazetone phosphate, you know, in diol intermediate. This is some of the mechanism, how this hydrogen is being transferred in the enzyme. This is one enzyme site, active site. What is happening? Previously in biochemistry, you know, substrate bind to the active site, enzyme convert to the product. Now this is the mechanism, how the structure of that substrate is being converted to a product by the electronic rearrangements over here, one compound to the other. So the histidine and there's the glutamine and the glute is a glutamine. So they are the amino acids from the protein and this yellow color is from enzyme. Imagine this yellow color is an enzyme molecule and they are the amino acid which is present in the enzyme participating onto the substrate converting to the product. Step one, step two, electronic rearrangement, another rearrangement and uh, in they all intermediate and then methyl glyoxal all of them are instable behind the scene inside the enzyme inside the active site which we don't know we know only the substrate throwing in and we see the product outside that's all we know but this is very critical what is happening inside that's what the latest information what we are getting it in the x-ray crystallographic studies now stage three here Stage 2 up to this one, and this is a 2, and this is stage 3, NADH to ATP formation. This are 3 phosphate, NAD, this is the energized molecule, more of PEI, and then you have 1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate, NADH is formed. This NADH may be used in cytosol or glycolysis, or in the next can pass through inside the mitochondria, and we are going to see this NADH role in, in TCS cycle that inside the mitochondria produce more ATP later on, not today, okay? Just remember this NADH at this step. Now, that's enough. Oxidation of this aldehyde group to acid group, NAD and NAD converted to NADH another, and then PI is added to it, acyl phosphate dehydration, the phosphate group is added to this position. So you have a 1,3 bisphosphate. 
So now in the free energy chart, re enzyme reactants at this stage and oxidation, free energy is being used, right? Because of more of that. And then what happened it is the energy is being released. That's what is a negative energy. Free energy always a negative, right? I mean, the reaction progress here, the, uh, you know, is, is delta G, the changes in the energy is, is large one here, changes in energy status. And then the product is formed over here, and there is some energy, you know, the free energy is being consumed over here at this part. But if you have the net energy from this and this, you are gaining uh, some of the energy of two ATP product. Oxidation, thioester intermediate, because we don't know yet what happened. Acyl formation and then enzyme product. That's what we had in free energy formation. And these are some of the mechanism how the NAD and histidine cysteine together, they binding together. If you are interested in doing more of PhD in one enzyme, in one reaction, you get a PhD. Okay. It's all about the X-ray crystallography and then you can mutate certain enzymes and, and on this product and you can you can do a lot of studies on this, okay. Now, this is uh, uh, the same, the yellow is an enzyme, but how the enzyme amino acids involved are participating in the conversion of uh, one molecule into the other, or the enzyme substrate into the reactants onto the product. This is already a 3-phosphate, hemithioacetal, hemithioacetal to oxidation thioester intermediate, and then NAD, NADH. Don't worry about the structure and everything. I'm just passing through you. I want to give you a view how, what happened inside the active site. That's what I want to, you to remember, okay? Uh, phosphorylation, now the phosphate group has been added to it. Phosphoglycerol kinase, the ADP, now this PO3 or phosphate group is added to ADP in presence of hydrogen. The kinase is facilitating this reaction you get ATP formation and 3-phosphoglycerate is formed. So the first carbon phosphate is converted, to, is donated to ADP to form ATP. Now we get ATP, a more energized molecule, and 3-phosphoglycerate now. What happened 3-phosphoglycerate? Phosphoglycerate mutates to form 3 position to 2 position. Look at this phosphate group at the third position to second position. See, position, I have to remember, name them from the functional group. The functional group is the first carbon, this is the second carbon, and this is the third carbon. Now, it has been moved to second carbon. That's what 2-phosphoglycerate. From this 2-phosphoglycerate, by enolase or removal of water at this reaction, phosphoenol pyruvate. And this is highly, highly unstable, the phosphoenol pyruvate. So it is easily donate the phosphate immediately as soon as the ADP is there. So ADP plus H plus again another molecule of ATP is formed and finally the pyruvate is the product. So if you have one glucose molecule, you get two pyruvate molecules being produced. And this pyruvate now with in presence of oxygen converted to either going to uh, ethanol or going to lactate in the muscle or in bacteria or going to acetyl coenzyme A. So 99% in our system, in our cell, the pyruvate is converted to acetyl coenzyme A, acetyl coenzyme A, which is getting into TCS cycle. So I, uh, uh, glycolysis stops up to this pyruvate, okay? So today's topic is glycolysis. I stop here. We will continue from the other part. Let us see the another mechanism here. Phosphoenol pyruvate, how the ADP is formed, ATP, the enol form. Phosphoenol. Enol means again, en means you know in the organic chemistry, en means double bond. See double bond, you got en. And then alcohol. So you got en and OL, OH, OH group, alcohol group. So we call it as enol form. Okay, enol form. What is phenol? Phenol is a six number ring and you will get a hydroxy group as well as the, you have a double bond in the Phenol. That's why you call phenol, enol. That is how the enol are called phenol, right? And again, is the, is the converted to it is a highly uh, stable form is this one pyruvate, enol form of pyruvate, and this is the real pyruvate form. So here you will find that there is no double bond here in the pyruvate. So in the enol form, yes, but this normal stable form, the C double bond O is there. So this hydrogen, you remember, this hydrogen is going over here. And this bond is going over this as the C double bond O. This is a very fascinating structure of the phosphoenol pyruvate, okay, to pyruvate. 
And these are the entire reaction in your textbook 6.1. You please remember this. And this is some of the energy level, how much energy is being released. So you may have some questions in your exam from this table as well, okay? What type of enzyme and which reactions and everything, you should remember that, okay? Also, please remember the reaction type, what type of reaction, which is isomerization, phosphoryl transfer, and dehydration. So pretty much you have more question in glycolysis from this table, 6.1, you have to study, okay? So this, this is again some mathematical, I mean, not mathematical, but how the, the uh, calculation of how many ATP is being used. See, NADH is formed and is being used here, red. NAD is formed and then is being used over here, okay? So it is, it is the ATP is formed here and then it is being used. So now you can see the final stage of pyruvate lactate, acetylcholine, acetaldehyde, and ethanol, further oxidation from pyruvate. But we are going to look into this pathway, okay? Um, uh, yeah, so this is again some sticky sticks and uh, uh, balls of uh, uh, the chart. I mean, where the, how the molecule rearrangements over here. And this is not a chemistry class. I'm not going into detail, but in a biochemistry, I'm interested in the enzymes and, and the conversion. Pyruvate decarboxylic acid, acetaldehyde, alcohol dehydrogenase. How the ethanol is being produced from pyruvate? You can see, see the pink C double bond O. It is being removed from here. 3 carbon pyruvate is converted to 2 carbon ethanol. So that is the reaction. And carbon dioxide is released at this stage. Pyruvate decarboxylate acid. Okay, now you can see that how the NAD, NADH is being participating in ethanol production. Lactate dehydrogenase to lactate. Bacteria, different bacteria, which is uh, using, an, uh, you know, obligate and anaerobes. I mean, if they are, they are actually pretty much of uh, dangerous or pathogen. Okay, food poisoning and other things on that. So we have to be very careful. Gas, gangrene, gas is produced in the end point of the fermentation, distorting the, destroying the tissues. So the gangrene is formed whenever this uh, the, our tissue is not being clean or surgically removed, you get the a gangrene, gas gangrene may be formed. So it's be very careful. That's why they used to have a infection after the post-surgical symptoms. These are the organisms which will mainly inhibit, uh, infecting the, uh, you know, surgical, post-surgical thing. And patient may be surviving after the surgery. 90% of the patient is dying because of the bacterial infection after the surgery. So, because they, convert in, con they are converting the uh, by pyruvate, uh, which is from the cells, into lactic acids and other toxic material. These are the starting and the end point of various fermentation reactions. Glucose, lactate, lactate, acetate, glucose, ethanol, ethanol, acetate. So you can have starting point, end point. Some of the microbes will use this as a substrate and produce this toxic product, okay? And this is a nicotinamide binding half. How the NAD is binding, you know? So that, this is a cartoon explaining that. And this again, the galactose, now the galactose is entering into the glycolytic pathway. Galactose entering to glucose 6-phosphate, fructose entering fructose 6-phosphate. If whatever the fruits which you are eating it, and that is going to be converted into fructose 6-phosphate. In other words, the adipose tissue is a good source of accumulating fructose. So if the fructose is there in adipose cells, that is also being converted, so you have more of energy can be released. So this is another way we can explain and fructose also being converted into the liver, and they can also store in the liver as well, fructose. Okay. Now the fructose, how the fructose is being converted, these are the fructose 1-phosphate, glycolytate, and how they are entering into the glycolytic pathway. Galactose, galactokinase, galactose 1-phosphate, these are some, some of the other bypassing, you know, not only glucose metabolism, we are seeing into the fructose metabolism, galactose metabolism, galactose catabolism. These are the entry point to the glycolytic pathway and thereby they are metabolized. See, lactose, the disaccharides, how the pink and this, we have a galactose and glucose, lactase enzyme. So, the, the lactase enzyme is not there, that the lactose intolerant. So, that means lactose cannot be digested and that is inducing lactose intolerance in some other Asiatic countries where they induce in children, they induce diarrhea and the adulthood they should avoid more of the lactose too. These are the bacterium structure, how this, uh, you know, it looks like the rod-like structure of the bacterium. 
cataract this is a normal eye look at the eye cataract look at the green stuff here that is the one where the accumulation of galactidol formation and you more of cataract look at this eye clear healthy eye unhealthy eye okay cataract so they are they are going to just puncture it and remove this one and they remove the, uh, the accumulation of water and that one layer that's what the cataract they do anybody's an optician if you want to study ophthalmology specialization this is a good source galactose galactitol you can see that one allosteric site catalytic site these are these enzyme reactions these are the reaction of velocity of the low ATP how the enzyme is being uh, regulated is being forward high ATP the, the fructose 6 phosphate degradation is being less so it is uh, feedback inhibition more ATP is there this process is slow. The low ATP, this is reaction velocity is up. You can see the speed of the reaction quick. Okay. In the small quantity, you can go now. So that's the graph. And this is the uh, muscular contraction at rest. Uh, the relaxed muscle where the more ATP is formed and pyruvate kinase is inhibit this and negative feedback. This, this at rest. What happens when you do exercise? During exercise, look at the PFK. Activate here, muscular contraction, fiber contraction, pyruvate is converted to carbon dioxide and water, ATP. Now you can see the activation of phosphate to pyruvate kinase. So the faster production of ATP, but there is no oxygen, so you get more of the lactate. Otherwise, you have real pain. Sprint. Okay. Glucose, glucose, uh, fructose 6 phosphate, fructose 6 bisphosphate, activate PFK. PFK is phosphofructokinase and the reaction is forward. And this is some of the enzyme kinetics for this enzyme, okay? Phosphofructokinase. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. And uh, this is again high blood glucose level, what happens, how they are being regulated. And phosphoenol pyruvate to ADP into pyruvate to ATP. And uh, alanine and ATP, they are also the negative to this. And fructose bisphosphate is positive, means it activates the reaction low blood glucose level and the high blood glucose level. After eating, you get forwarding this reaction. When you are hungry, this reaction will be facilitated. Okay. And this is the family of glucose transporters, which I mentioned earlier. Glucose 1, GLU2, this transporter 2, transporter 3, transporter 4, transporter 5. Where you occur, please remember, you may get some questions from this table as well. Okay. And these are the cancer. Pre-therapy, how it looks like. After the scanning of our cancer tissues, here the cancer, here the tumor, here the tumor, this is the kidney. Look at this one. And after the therapy, they have removed this tumor. But only they left there except here. And then a little bit of over here in the bladder. Meaning they are removing of the after therapy. So this is some other cancer marker in the scanning of uh, glycolytic. This glycolytic pathway is one of the cancer marker indicator. And the proteins in glucose metabolism encoded by genes regulated by hypoxia inducible factor or HIF factor. So if this HIF hypoxia means less oxygen, that will induce this. So that's what some of the uh, NASA scientists, they are undergoing some experiments when they go into the uh, microgravity environment and also the less oxygen, they are monitoring this. One of this one. And then aspergillyserol, glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase as well, one of the hypoxia induced or hexokinase as well. Hypoxia, HIF1 activated, blood glucose, uh, I mean blood vessel growth, if you have more of oxygen is, uh, is there or less oxygen is there than the tumor environment, it will induce the blood vessel growth. The metastasis will be facilitated by hypoxia and thereby tumor cells will more with the, enriched with the blood vessel so that it will receive more of nutrients. And this is again uh, the pathway of, uh, of uh, of the glucose, but here the lactate and some of the amino acids of oxaloacetic acid or glycerol, these are the gluconeogenesis. Look at this from pyruvate, you remove, you go backward, go on this step, reversal, and then finally you get uh, glucose. Glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase finally convert glucose 6 phosphate to glucose. So more amount of glucose can be formed on the gluconeogenesis. That means when there is a lack of glucose in our body, this process will be activated 
and thereby you get more glucose in your body, in your, in your system. In other words, you are recycling. Once you've eaten the food, when you activate this, still you can live for a while because you, are, you have to activate more of uh, the uh, gluconeogenesis in your system. So glucose is necessary for our, uh, our brain. Even small quantity of glucose is enough to activate our brain. So here, this is the process how uh, the glycerol entry point. If you take glycerol, that glycerol can enter, get into glucose formation. And another one is the amino acid. The amino acid converted to oxaloacetate, especially aspartic acid. And those are the amino acids which are from the protein can be converted to oxaloacetate and thereby it can backward go reverse to uh, glycerol gate 3 phosphate and from these uh, you know converted to glucose the gluconeogenesis in the absence of glucose and this is being uh, facilitated it's being uh, enhanced by liver cell that's what you should understand the new enzyme here pyruvate carboxylase new enzyme which is involved in gluconeogenesis phosphoenol pyruvate carboxy kinase a new enzyme it is not present in the glycolysis but rest of the other enzyme are sharing with both of these uh, enzyme i mean both of the pathway glycolysis as well as gluconeogenesis okay glycerol glycerol phosphate hydroxyacetone phosphate and this is again how this been conversion which is occurring backward atp grasp domain biotin domain this again uh, uh, active cofactors involved in in the enzyme reaction and uh, this is activator how the lysine has been activated in the stick diagram and this is cytoplasm mitochondria where how the oxaloacetate from the mitochondria is being produced and this is being used for gluconeogenesis so mitochondria or pyruvate and, and oxaloacetate or malate shuttle malate and it's inside they can also be coming out we call it as oxaloacetate malate shuttle we will be studying future of this one, but please remember the oxaloacetate can produce more of glucose. That's the message here. So these are glucose transporters and glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme and the how the cytoplasm inside the, the transporters, how these transporters will work. Okay. Again, this is the uh, reactions of gluconeogenesis, just like glycolysis, please go through this pathway you may get some questions from here as well for this class, for this uh, lecture. And this is the glucose and gluconeogenesis. You know, it's not an exactly reversal, but certain reactions are involved in gluconeogenesis. This is a reverse pathway to glucose, and this is the glucose is converted to pyruvate, and this is the pyruvate is converted to glucose. So we are studying in the glucose metabolism, glucose catabolism in one side, glucose breaking down in another side, glucose is being synthesized in our system, in our body. Okay, and these are the kinase domain and phosphate domain I and mean, how they are reacting in the regulation. This is not much for you today. And uh, these high levels of fructose, the regulation again, how this one enzyme is activated and inactivated in this process. Again, these are the gene, gene expression of, uh, of uh, transcription factors binding to transcribe the gene. And these ATP and the ATP, you know, ratios and net flux and how many ATP is formed and how many molecules, these are some of the calculations for that too. And compared to molecule 1 to B, A to B and B to A, A to B, 120 molecule and B to uh, A, how many? 72 molecules is being used. So how many ATP is being net flux is B is equal to 48 molecules. Now, in liver, gluconeogenesis, which is occurring now. In muscle, glycolysis, which is occurring now. And now, in muscle, liver, and cardiac muscle, and this is the integration of pathway. You can see how the blood glucose is maintained, how liver glucose is maintained, how cardiac muscle glucose metabolism is regulated, and how muscular cell is being regulated. So, with oxygen and without oxygen. Here, with oxygen, acetyl coa carbon dioxide and without oxygen you get more of lactate in the muscle but here you get the precursors in the liver cell or the reversal or gluconeogenesis you can see that gluconeogenesis formation only in the liver and it is not present in the cardiac muscle 
And uh, the, some of these, uh, uh, you know, enzyme activity and, and some of the research finding on the ADP molecules and everything, this is very interesting. And this, some of the uh, micro, microbes which contain this enzyme PFK and uh, phosphofructose phosphatase enzyme. Uh, with that, we are uh, finishing uh, uh, main